Welcome to Community Education. My name is Matt Cashman. I'm the Director of Community Education here at the high school. Concord Community Education has been in existence for over 30 years. We offer three semesters year-round, a winter, a spring, and a fall, and our classes run anywhere from 5.30 in the evening or as late as 7.30 in the evening, Monday through Saturday. Come visit our website at concordcommunityed.org or simply call us on the phone at 225-0804. Today I have three new community ed instructors that are going to begin the winter semester. Our first one is Alma Yoss. Thank you, Alma, for coming on. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now, you're teaching residential interior design. Yes. That's kind of neat. Well, tell me a little bit about that. Well, this is a passion of mine. Um, I graduated the Fashion Institute uh, in New York City. Um, I've been practicing ever since. Um, I don't like to admit it, but it's a little over 40 years. Wow. So I've been, um, I've been doing interior design. I've done commercial interior design. I've done hospitals, offices, banks, and residential design, and everything attached to residential design. So you're very, very experienced. Now, we're going to run your, your class on Wednesday nights. Yes. And it's going to go for a period of 21 weeks? Correct. All right, so just real briefly, you know, I'm interested in taking this uh, as a viewer. Tell me what that would be like. Tell me what we'd would do in those 21 weeks. Well, this is a program that uh, I taught down in Brookline okay. uh, for the Art Institute, and it's a variation of that program, but very close. And the idea is to teach the student how to start a project and take it through all phases of the project from learning how to draft and space planning all the way through to uh, presenting the conceptual design. Okay. Let me ask you, um, do your prospective students, do they need to have any kind of a background in design or can you just take someone who wants to learn a little bit more about it but might not have a, a solid background in that? Our best student is someone who has had a passion for it all their lives. Okay. And for whatever the reason that they didn't pursue it, um, uh, perhaps when they first uh, went to college or they didn't, there's no prerequisite for it other than you're creative and it's something that you've wanted to do. Okay. Okay. And now into that too, do you get into color design and what matches with what and yes. that sort of thing? Um, we start off with uh, learning how to draft uh, because uh, that is the fundamental of what we do. We have to be able to put it on paper and communicate our design concept. Uh, after that, we uh, go into a class, uh, color, color theory, materials, and sources. Okay. And included in that class is I take the students down to Boston, to the Boston Design Center, wow. which is something that they always love. That, that sounds exciting. Yeah. That it sounds is. It's a lot of fun. The next uh, course that we, we start is uh, learning how to, uh, learning architecture and interior design and furniture history. And with that class, we spend one day down at the Boston Fine Arts Museum going through their furniture uh, section, which again is a very big plus. Oh, sure it is. It sure it is. You, you must have a lot of connections in Boston as well that can... Well, um, when I taught in Boston uh, for a few years, I did beat a lot of people, and I do a lot of work in Boston, as well as uh, Connecticut and all through New Hampshire, New York, and Florida. Great, great. Well, it sounds like a very exciting class. Um, and, and you've taught this before anyway, right? Yes, and um, so I know it's tried and true, yeah. and I know that a lot of the students that I've had over the years are practicing interior designers, and that's a very big reward for me. That is terrific. That is terrific. So 21 weeks starting on Wednesdays. Do you know yet what time in the evening we're looking at? Uh, 5.30 okay. uh, uh, for three hours, and uh, the first uh, few sections will be taught this, uh, I'll call it in the fall semester or the winter semester rather. Sure. And uh, then the last two are going to be taught in September. Okay. And so that's exciting. That is exciting. That is very exciting. Well, we're very happy to have you. Thank you. I think you bring a lot of experience and I think you're going to get a lot of people signing up. So thanks again and look forward to the winter semester starting. And thank you. I'm very pleased to be part of your team. Awesome. Thank you. All right, next up we're going to have Carolyn Hughes, and she is doing a course on starting home-based childcare. 
So our next, next guest is Carolyn Hughes. Hi, Carolyn. Thank you Hi for there. coming on. Thank you. So your course that's going to be starting in the winter semester as well as Alma's is starting a home-based child care. Yes. Tell me a little bit about that. What would you be covering in your course? Well, I'm going to help people that um, are starting out that don't have to go through the whole uh, troubles that I went through okay. learning myself. Um, usually it's parents or moms that have um, just had a baby or that it's, she's finding it hard to you know, stay home sure. and make the money. So you, you work with um, people that want to start up their own business as a child care. Now, yes. do you find most of the time that they're doing it out of their own house or? Yes, the, this class would be doing it out of their own house. Okay. So they would, it would be about them setting up their environments inside and out. Okay. Um, the safety in the environments, um, the way to do it cheaply to get cheap toys, sure. you know, and free advertising and just an easy, simple way so that if they ever had the question in their mind that they wanted to do something like that, that they would be able to. And I think we're well suited having you teach this course because you are a licensed, uh, you know, um, home care, child care provider. Well, I had a licensed preschool and child care in my home for 10 years. Okay. And then I had a very small one um, after that. And, you know, I learned from my own mistakes. <coughs> you know, we're going to talk about um, licensing, licensed exempt, and just a regular um, babysitting, if you will. Sure. And the different um, things that you need to know about each. Nice. Now, how, 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 how many kids typically in a child care or with your class, um, some of these people that would be taking this, you know, three, five children maybe at a time, or what, what does well, that look like? Well, licensed exempt, you usually have three. Okay. Um, and then to be licensed, you have six preschoolers and, and three after school. Okay. Um, but you also, you know, there's, there's child cares that are open that no one knows about that have a bit more than that. Okay. But there's, you know, there's pros and cons to each way of doing it. Sure. And, I, and again, having done it, which is a great tribute to you. Yes. Um, I think that the people coming in will really get some good advice and some good direction on, on how to do this. Yes, and I, I also, um, I wanna tell them the difference because I've, I've done it unlicensed and I've done it licensed. So I okay. can tell them my experience with it. And I also have broken up on the second day that they could go over the different um, you know, environments, they're, they're kind of going to build it all on paper okay. so that they can have an idea what they want before they even start. Okay. So they'll basically have a plan all set out for them when they go to get started. Okay. What, you know, you, you introduced it a little bit. What is the difference between licensed and unlicensed as far as, you know, is there, you know, what makes that difference, I guess? Well, the things that I've noticed is with a licensed child care, you would, um, first of all, you were inspected by the state. They come in and they see you and they want to know, you know, what you're doing and they keep an eye on you. Um, a lot of parents prefer that. They feel safer okay. because there are people that they can go to. Sure. So um, I found that you can get a lot more business, a lot more children coming in and the parents feel safer okay. when you have a licensed child care. There are a few more responsibilities that you have, more paperwork, um, but I think it's worth it. And so someone watching this program, would you say that it's, it's fairly easy after taking your course um, and all the materials you cover? It, would it be fairly easy for someone to go out there and start their own childcare? Uh, yes, yes. I don't cover completely the, the business end of it because okay. there's just a tremendous amount there um, that you can find in other programs but this one is just basically um, how to get something started easy simple basic okay you know how to set up your environments and be safe about it nice well we're looking forward to it it this program runs on thursdays yes um, starting on january 22nd so uh, i think we're going to get a lot of takers i think it sounds like a great program i hope so thanks very much carolyn for Thank coming you. on okay next up we have steve Peralt who's gonna to talk to us about his class, which is Fundamentals of Public Speaking. Welcome back. We have uh, Steve Bro, 
Thanks for coming on, Steve. Thanks, Matt. Pleasure to be here. Thank you. Um, so we're going to talk about fundamentals of public speaking, and that, that's something I'm pretty excited about mm -hmm. because we really haven't offered a course like that before. And uh, I remember when we met several months ago, you told me your background and that you participated in the Toastmasters mm. program. So uh, for people watching the show, tell me a little bit about um, what are they going to learn at Fundamentals of Public Speaking? Okay. So basically the Fundamentals of Public Speaking, we started off at the very beginning of someone entry level where they have no experience at all in, in public speaking to those who have, you know, they speak in public many times during the week and feel like they're, they're experienced. But we're going to take it from all levels. And okay. what we do is that we're going to start off with the basics, an understanding of, let's say, vocal variety or uh, uh, stage, where they stand on, on, on the stage when they're presenting, or, and, and uh, PowerPoint, those types of things. And when you get to the more advanced, then we start to look at advanced level, we're saying the use of pauses, because you'll be amazed that some people just don't understand the use of pauses, how effective they are, sure, and, and how to use them, because some people don't use them correctly. Right. So that's, that's kind of the, uh, the, the difference between beginning and more advanced. You start looking at the different techniques to improve in your public speaking skills. I may, uh, I may need help in that category, okay. so I may be <laughs> at your course. Um, so, you know, a lot of times, I've heard this before, I think people are petrified mm. of getting up and mm -hmm. speaking in front of people. Tell us a little bit of the magic of how you get people through that or over that. That's a great point, Matt. Uh, basically, it comes down to being supportive. Okay. So now, I belong to Toastmasters, Toastmasters sure. International. It's uh, over 300,000 members in that organization. It's international uh, clubs, 14,000 plus clubs. I belong to five of those 14,000 clubs. Wow. So I get a lot of, I get a lot of you know, stage time, I would say. Uh, two or three times per week, I'm in front of a group, uh, speaking in front of a group. And, and that's where we, we start looking at trying to get people to, to get in front of, the, of, of, a, of a group to speak. Sure. And, and your point is, is, is right on, that people get so nervous when they stand up to speak. Sometimes they'll, they'll, they'll speak for two seconds, and, and then they stop. Right. I've seen people actually break down and start crying. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's, that's the extreme that I've seen. And, but we're there fear. to support them. We're there to support them, say, no, keep going, do this, and try this. Sure, okay. All right. And, and, you know, through the years of being involved in those different Toastmasters mm -hmm. and, and working with people for public speaking, do you find the typical progression that you do um, see people really come along? So at the end of your course, if, if you have a person who's a little gun shy about mm -hmm. um, getting up in front of people speaking, yeah. Yeah. where could you forecast that person to be at the end of your course? Great. The, the transition, I would say, yeah. I normally say the transition is four weeks. Okay. That's when people start realizing or, or noticing the difference in their skills. Okay. And, and they, they develop a comfort level. So after four weeks, they get a comfort level of standing up in front of a group, and then they start improving. Then, then what you want to do is start building on that, that skill, the techniques, just okay. adding on more and more techniques as they progress through the, the class. Sure. And to me, eight weeks is, is you'll, you'll, you'll come out of there, have some self-confidence there coming out of that. That's after true. eight weeks. And, and so your course is starting on Thursdays on January 22nd. Yes. And it's going to go eight weeks yeah. out. Um, do you recall off the top of your head what time, like 5.30, 6 o'clock? I think it was 7 o'clock. 7, yeah. okay. 7 o'clock, yeah. Okay, yeah. good. So if you have, you know, you, you get done eating dinner and mm -hmm. you have time and you want to get out of the house, that's mm -hmm. a great, great one to come and, mm -hmm. uh, come and do. Yeah, uh, I, I've, it's, the challenge is that when it's earlier in the day, that's exactly it. You get, it, it conflicts with the, you know, people's supper time, just getting home from work and just rushing around. That's right. Try to make it later in the, in the day so that in the evening, so people have time to prepare for the class. Sure. Yeah. How did you first get into it? What, what, what got you into oh, public speaking? It was uh, about 10 years ago I started with Toastmasters. Okay. And basically I did a presentation at work at one point and just, I walked out of there, I didn't feel right. But you know what? Everyone told me that I did a great job. All right. All right? So I heard that. That's, that's the, the feedback that I got from my peers and my coworkers. Nice. But then I joined Toastmasters and, and I, I delivered a speech and all of a sudden I, I get the feedback that I had 15 ums, 12 ahs, uh, <laughs> and I paused too long. So I got that feedback, and, and that's the only way to improve your speaking skills, to get that feedback. Sure. And that's what, in this class, I'm going to do the same thing. People are going to, we're going to get in front of a group, have these little exercises and sessions. Yeah. Give, provide them with feedback. Okay, here's how to improve. Here's how we want to change the process. Okay. We're going to exercise, you know, do that whole process. Sure. Do you, uh, you know, and I don't know if this is involved in your course, but do you ever get into videotaping or filming someone? Because that, the, you, that's exactly it, Matt. I mean, okay. In, that's, that's where I'd say that gets the advanced level. I mean, you okay. 
what you want to do is start recording yourself. And then you st we might do that in maybe, uh, maybe a seventh or eighth class. I okay. uh, might try that. And okay. it, it depends if people want to be videotaped or not. But sure. We'll leave it up to them. Sure. But that's where you see, you start videotaping yourself and you watch it and you say to yourself, I, that, I did that? You know, yeah. You're surprised. But it's a great technique. So uh, I have one last question. If, um, again, for the viewers that are, are considering taking this course, do you give them a topic to choose to right out of the gate to uh, talk about, or do you give them pretty much a standard, this is what we want you to talk about, do some mm -hmm. research on it? How does that work? The topics vary, but I'm gonna, the very first night, it's the easiest topic. It's tell me about yourself. Okay. You shouldn't re require notes, but some people still need notes, but tell sure. me about yourself, and, and that's how we start our first, the first night. You know, tell me about yourself, you find out, and they speak in front of a group. Kind of like a good icebreaker. That's exactly what we call them, icebreakers. All right. Well, you still may, me, may see me come to your uh, to your. I'd love classes. to have you there. All right. That sounds good. Well, Steve, thanks very much for coming on the show. Thanks, Matt. Appreciate and, it. And uh, we look forward to having you start in January, All January right. 22nd on Thursday evenings. Yes. Thanks All right. a lot. Thanks again. Mm -hmm. So thanks very much for tuning in. In the near future, we are inviting eight more new instructors for the winter term. They will come on. They'll do about 30 seconds to one minute of an intro of who they are and the courses they want to teach for us in the winter semester. So in ending, get off the couch, get out of the house, try something new, learn a new language, take an art class, or maybe something you could take is online that you need to look at and it will get you out of the house and enjoy the winter months. Come visit our website on conqueredcommunityed.org or simply call us at 225-0804. Thanks again for tuning in, and if you take these classes, I'm sure you'll really enjoy them. Thank you.